In this video, we present SCSSNet, a method for 3D scene segmentation from real-world LiDAR point clouds. My name is Christopher Rist and my co-authors are David Schmidt, Markus Enzweiler and Dario Gavrila. We are with the Intelligent Vehicles Group at TU Delft and Mercedes-Benz. The task of scene segmentation is challenging because it requires the description of complete 3D space as opposed to being limited to the point of view of a sensor and the resulting sensor view image. Our approach specifically addresses the problem of representing the geometry of large outdoor scenes. We are able to avoid the trade-off between processable scene extent and resolution of geometry. Our approach generates semantic predictions from the full set of 19 classes of the Semantic Kitty dataset for all objects within the scene. SCSSNet takes only a single LiDAR point cloud as input to build up the scene representation. Let's look at a small example to see how our approach helps to build a useful representation for self-driving tasks. On the left we see an image of a single LiDAR point cloud from the Kitty dataset. The point cloud itself is just a set of 3D points with reflectivity information. It is recorded from the position of the Ego vehicle as pictured in the center of the image. SCSSNet encodes the point cloud into a hidden representation, which is then decoded into a scene segmentation function. The hidden representation encodes geometry and semantics of all points within 3D space of the scene. The output coordinate definition is decoupled from the sensor's point of view and allows to query for information about all coordinates of interest, regardless if they are close to an input LiDAR measurement or occluded. Now we will show how SCSSNet represents 3D geometry, how the encoder and decoder structures are constructed and how the latent space is adjusted to the task of scene segmentation. Voxel grids are a simple method to represent the geometry of 3D scenes and objects. Voxels are like pixels in 3D. For a voxel grid, the space needs to be digitalized into 3D cubes of a certain resolution. Our approach to represent 3D geometry is based on previous works which use implicit functions to represent single objects in 3D. Here a classification function is used to predict the occupancy value of individual points in space. The resulting decision surface of this function can be interpreted as surface of the object. This results in an implicit geometry representation based on this continuous decision surface. In previous work, deep implicit functions are used to represent the shape of single objects. These can be synthetic objects of the ShapeNet dataset where ground truth geometric information is available. An encoder creates a fixed size latent vector from an input data sample. This hidden representation is then decoded into a deep implicit function which represents the object of interest. Our task differs considerably from the representation of single objects. We handle outer street scenes that have a large spatial extent of up to 50 meters in front and behind the Ego vehicle. In addition, we are interested in semantic information about the many objects and surfaces that are present within such a large scene. On the left side, we display the ground truth data from the Semantic Kitty Scene Completion Benchmark, which uses a voxel grid with 20 centimeters resolution. Every voxel carries the information if it is empty or one of 19 semantic classes. We compare this to a render of our scene segmentation function as depicted on the right hand side. Every point on the surface includes the semantic class prediction for the corresponding object as well. This representation does not suffer from voxel grid discretization artifacts and is able to represent finer geometric details. Our goal is now to create the segmentation function for a 3D scene. As seen earlier, the input of the function is a 3D coordinate of the scene, and the output of the function is a classification of this coordinate. The segmentation function will not only decide if a coordinate is occupied by any object or not, but also predict the semantic class of the object. This makes up the dimensionality of the output classification vector. It is of dimension n plus 1. 
n is the number of semantic classes and 1 is the free space class, meaning that a coordinate is not occupied by any object. This output function will be implemented by a neural network. Neural networks are suitable for classification tasks and they result in a continuous function with a continuous decision surface. We are going to use a neural network which represents the scene segmentation function. But this function needs to be dependent on the actual sensor input data. The function is marked with a latent vector c that serves as a parameterization of the function. You can either look at the output function as parameterized by c or as a function of two inputs, the query coordinate as first input and the latent code as a second input. This latent vector c is generated by a second neural network from the actual sensor input data. Both networks combined create an encoder-decoder structure. We are working with outdoor LiDAR scans and need to encode scenes of a large spatial extent. Therefore, we cannot use a single fixed size latent vector. Instead, we structure the latent space spatially and generate many latent vectors that each encode the area in its proximity. It suggests itself to use a 2D grid of encoding vectors that is spread out over the ground plane of our scene. In this setup, the latent space will actually grow when the extent of the scene grows. In other words, every latent vector always encodes the same area. In addition, our encoder predicts latent vectors at three different resolutions, as depicted on the right. The decoder now has access to feature vectors that predict coarser or finer details of the scene. To classify a query point, latent vectors that are spatially close to that point are used. To prevent discontinuities at the transition between two different sets of latent vectors, we take the weighted average of multiple predictions from neighboring latent vectors. To implement the encoder network, we use a convolutional neural network. The UNet-like structure decreases spatial resolution and uses transposed convolutions to upsample and concatenate the feature maps. The decoder is a small multi-layer perceptron. For every query point, spatially close conditioning vectors are selected from the latent conditioning grid. The network uses conditioned batch normalization to express its dependence on the selected latent vector. The intermediate feature maps are scaled and shifted with deviation and mean created from the latent code. When training the network, we receive a cross entropy loss for every combination of latent code and query point. This loss signal trains encoder and decoder together from scratch. In the last part of this video, we will see how the supervision signal for geometric segmentation is generated and look at some quantitative and qualitative results. It is easy to see that for every LiDAR measurement, the straight line between the LiDAR sensor and that measurement is empty. There are only few cases where this assumption is violated by transparent materials or reflections. While training, we do not consider the space within objects and behind LiDAR measurements, as we train our method on single LiDAR frames only. The transition between object and free space is expected to be located as near as possible at the object surface. The training encourages a sharp transition by sampling free space targets with a high probability very close to the corresponding LiDAR measurement. The resulting additional training points constitute the supervision signal for geometry, which is completely derived from the single point cloud itself. We train our method on the LiDAR point clouds of the KIDI odometry dataset. These have been recorded using a Velodyne scanner featuring 64 scan lines. All sequences have been annotated with a rich set of 19 semantic classes by the Semantic KIDI dataset. The Semantic KIDI dataset also features a semantic segmentation benchmark on LiDAR data, where we submit our test set predictions for evaluation. This benchmark is based on the popular mean intersection over union metric.
The baseline methods in the top three rows are based on the projection of all LiDAR points onto a 2D cylindric image plane. The bottom row shows the performance of our SCSS net method. Even though our method is designed to make semantic predictions for the complete 3D scene and to differentiate between occupied and free regions, it still outperforms the image-based methods for semantic segmentation. All inference with SCSSNet is based on the classification of individual query points. To generate the semantic segmentation of the input point cloud, we just have to use all points of this point cloud as query points. To now visualize the scene segmentation function, we create meshes that approximate the decision surface between free space and all occupied classes. The mesh generation algorithm uses marching cubes and applies a numerical optimization of vertices and face normals of the resulting mesh. To estimate a ground plane, we first classify the input point cloud. Afterwards, we select every LiDAR point that is predicted to be one of the ground semantic classes. Bilinear interpolation is applied to obtain a dense regular grid of ground points that we query for semantic classes a second time to obtain the final segmentation estimate. We present some visual examples of point clouds from the Kitty odometry test set, a visualization of the resulting scene segmentation function and the ground plane segmentation. The scene segmentation function estimates a free space probability for every scene coordinate. The geometry of the scene is represented and visualized by the ESO surface of the free space function for a certain threshold. In areas where no LiDAR measurements are available, either because of distance or because of occlusions, the learned segmentation function defaults to the prediction of free space. This is to be expected because we are training on single LiDAR frames and there are no training targets for the occupied classes in empty areas. However, we also visualize the semantic class predictions on the ground plane, which is estimated from the input scan as well. Querying the segmentation function for semantic predictions on the ground plane and masking out the free space probabilities reveals that the representation is meaningful, even in sparsely measured areas. In conclusion, the proposed scene segmentation function that is based on spatially distributed conditioning vectors has several advantages. It avoids a trade-off between processable scene extent and output resolution. It achieves state-of-the-art segmentation results and it can be trained from single LiDAR scans together with semantic annotations. Future work involves training the proposed method on time-accumulated LiDAR measurements as supervision signal for full scene completion. Different levels of sparsity or completely hidden areas could be considered when explicitly modeling statistical uncertainty within the scene completion data. Thank you for watching.